Today we will be talking about virtualizing Kali Linux in VMbox. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is download Oracle VMbox. This is the virtual machine that we will be using for our virtualization. Now you can just search this, it will show up the first link in Google. And once you click on this, it should take you to the VirtualBox website. This is the official website and here you can see a big box where it says download VirtualBox. So we can go to downloads here and uh, you can see there is a lot of things but we just need this button right here which says Windows Hosts. Now it is saying Hosts because uh, well virtualization works with Hosts and a virtualized system. So now after we download this we need to install this virtual box. So let's close this then let me open my files. Oops, it opened on my second monitor. Hold up, let me get that. Let's drag this over. Here we go. Now, we just have to double click on this and it should start installing. Now, uh, this installation is pretty simple. We just do it like any other installation. And every, this is like network. So the virtual machine will use a separate network driver which will be separate from your stock driver for the one that you use for your machine. So after this is installed you can choose to run it instantly or you can wait we will run it right now. So I'll just click finish and it should start virtual machine. Now here you can see this is the uh, interface you should be greeted to it after you installed virtual box and ran it. Now, after we're here, we need to click on new. We want to create new virtual machine and we don't have any. So we'll click new and you should see a page like this. Now the first thing we need to select is what type of operating system we are using. Now we are going with Linux, so we'll click on that. And then we need to select what type of version of Linux this is. Now we are installing Kali Linux. so. You can select Debian or Ubuntu or Linux, just Linux, it works for every one of them. So that shouldn't be much of an issue. But just make sure that uh, whatever you're selecting falls under the distribution which Linux, Kali Linux is based off of. So after you do this, now as you can see I selected Ubuntu but uh, VirtualBox has a really cool feature where if you type a name, uh, as you can see I'm typing Kali Linux and it should automatically detect what type of Linux we are choosing and as you can see it detected and uh, it selected for us. Now most cases it should be uh, easy, it should select but if it doesn't you can manually select what you want to install. Now, after all of this is done. Now you need to choose where this virtual machine will be saved. Now I recommend putting it in a place where you have a lot of storage or enough storage to install an operating system. So for Kali Linux 40 to 50 gigabytes is enough but I would recommend keeping about 100 gigabytes just to be safe. Now here you can choose uh, how much RAM will be allocated. Now uh, I recommend not going over the orange or red lines because uh, it will really make your PC struggle. 50-50 is good enough. Uh, but since I am uh, recording this, I will put a little bit lower than 50% and here you need to choose virtual hard disk. Now not image virtual hard disk because we are creating a virtual hard disk not an image. Now you need to choose this and it should create a virtual hard drive in your hard drive. So it's kind of like a simulation. So after you do this, uh, click on dynamic allocated. Now do not go with fixed if you are absolutely sure how much storage you need. But I do recommend going over dynamic because it's really easy to change it afterwards. So now select how much storage you want to give. I will give 40 gigabytes. Now remember, you need to have enough storage for this to stay there. Now 
after you click this and it's done now now we have a virtual machine now do not start it just yet now this is a very common mistake uh, do not start it just yet we need to configure this to run the iso or the installation iso of kali linux now as you can see in the options we have this all of these options now these are just basic settings now advanced just give by directional it will uh, make it so that uh, you can copy and paste stuff just by dragging and dropping and you don't have to search for anything like you don't have to search for a specific file you can just drag and drop a file onto the vm and it should just copy it to it now the other these things are not that important now here is the important part now remember your ram processors are very important now in process codes uh, as I said, you need a good amount of cores. So I'm giving it 6 cores just because I have 12 threads and 6 cores is not that much for me. But I don't recommend doing this on a dual core machine. I tried doing it and it's really a bad time. So try giving it 2 to 4 cores. You need at least 2 cores for this. Or uh, the more the better. Octa core is recommended because it's really better then uh, we have section which is just some advanced things which we do not need to worry about now then we have display and give the display as much memory as possible now if you are using an external graphics card this should be much higher but if you are not uh, it shouldn't matter now as you can see i can choose how many monitor this uses i will just put it in one uh, so just to keep things simple. Now other than that, uh, these things are not that important. Uh, the things that I am showing you right now are like the core concept that you need to know uh, to start a virtual machine. And now this is the fun part. Now here is the place where we will be giving the ISO to this machine. Now, I accidentally clicked on this, you don't need this. You need to go to the empty, where it says empty on a disk type and click on here. Then you can just select this and it should let you choose an ISO. Now, I am assuming you have the ISO downloaded. If you, if you didn't download it, you can just download it from Google. It's, the website is kali.org and you can download Linux from there. Remember, this works with other distributions as well, not just Kali Linux. I'm using Kali Linux just to show you how this works. So, if you do this with other operating systems, the process is same, just change up the ISO file. And it should work just fine. Now, after we configure that, it's mostly done. You can just hit OK and the other things should be auto-configured. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Now after everything is done, just double check that everything is okay. Then we can start our system. Now when you start this, the first thing it will do is set up the system because, well, as you know, it is not set up or it is not installed. We need to install this to our drive. Now the installation process is fairly the same as uh, how you install a normal Kali Linux system. Now, I thought that I wouldn't uh, go through this too much uh, because I already made a Kali Linux installation video. So, uh, you can just follow along and I kind of just speed ran this and you should be able to follow along. I kept it to uh, a simple speed where you can follow along with the tutorial. Now it's just loading a bunch of things and detecting the network drive and the rest is just <laughs> configurations. Now in the uh, new Linux updates, something could be, I'm using a little bit older version just because I had that and just skip the domain name, you don't need that. Then you need to type your system name. Uh, just make sure you remember this because this is your username and then create a password. I will create my password and save it.
and then you, your time zones then here comes the disk part now you once you get in here you will see that there is only one disk so i will just go guided i don't i just want to show you how this works so as you can see there is one drive which will save 40 gigabytes and it's a virtual drive okay so now if you are seeing this and if you install kali linux before you will understand most of it just because it's basically the same process as the uh, dual booted linux video because it's actually safe now as you can see it's telling us which software you would like i personally do not use the top 10 because it takes up a lot of space then just continue and it should be done installing now this will take a long time i just sped it up because well it's very slow now after you are here and well everything is installing you just need to install the grub loader just continue with this then select the drive and it should be mostly done now i did encounter a little bit of error or you can say a little bit of issue uh where after this part got stuck so it was not rewarding for the life of me so it's okay you can just power the pc off or the power the virtual machine off my mistake so virtual machine off and it should be installed so if you're having the same trouble then just power the virtual machine off then just restart it and it should work just fine then as you can see <laughs> it's working it's i told you that it's basically fine to power off at that stage so now it will boot into kali linux now i am working with this uh, window is just because it's the simpler to resize this after your login because well it just looks good so now just log in with everything that you set up and you should be welcome to your new virtual environment now remember virtual machines uses half or as much resource that you have assigned so don't go overboard while sharing the resources because if you don't leave resources for your windows machine your system may be unstable so after you're here you can just go into full screen mode from here and once you do that as you can see it's in full screen mode now oh, let's test out if our system is working uh, let me do a simple app update apt update and just enter my password and there so it's working if <laughs> now you can test it out you can play with different versions of linux you can use ubuntu or mint or you know the any linux version that you wanted to try out but was too scared to try because you know it's linux so you can try out linux through this you can even use this to virtualize mac os but that requires a lot of power so that's it for the virtual machine video, hope you have a good one and see you guys in the next one.